Tonight, broadcast live around the world from the Crystal Cathedral in Garden Grove, California. Welcome to a Christmas Eve candlelight celebration with Dr. Robert Schuler and Robert Anthony Schuler, with special guests Mr. Piano Roger Williams, soloist Nita Whitaker, contemporary Christian artist Ken Miedma, Carol Aspling and the Cathedral Academy Chorus, child soloist Ryan Lysak, the Crystal Cathedral Choir with Don Newen, the Hour of Power Orchestra with Mark Riley, and Sean Groombridge at the mighty 16,000 pipe Hazel Wright organ. It's Christmas, for unto us a son is given, unto us a child is born, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Christmas prayer. Oh God, we thank you that 2,000 years ago a child was born. And we hear the cry these centuries later echoing through the eons, crying out to people everywhere, bringing joy and hope and good news. And so open our ears, O oh Lord, that we might hear on this precious Christmas day, the cry of that precious child might hearken to that cry and become followers of Jesus Christ, living hope and faith and love 
and be an example for all we meet. For then truly the sounds and sight of Christmas will celebrate the new birth of faith born in our hearts this Christmas. Amen. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. And all went to be registered, each to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he is of the house and lineage of David. There he was registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to be delivered. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Thank you. 
Now there were in the same country shepherds, living out in the field, keeping their watch over their flocks by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, 
Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill to all. Sing 
From the manger in Thank you, Ken, for that wonderful music. Well, Christmas is a time for giving, and this is an opportunity for all of us to be able to give our Christmas gifts to God and to the church. And so at this time, our ushers will come forward and they'll receive your tithes and your offerings and your Christmas gifts, and this is a special time for us to be able to give in this special way. So if you'll please prepare them at this time, they will be received, and we thank you in advance for everything you're able to give. Well, we want you to know that we have church here every single Sunday. And even though Sunday is on Christmas Day, we still have services. So we're having one service tomorrow at 10 a.m. And January 1st is on Sunday as well, but we're having services here January 1st also. So if you're, eight, if you're out really late on January 31st, we're still going to be here, both services. And you might want to just stop by here on your way home. So, so uh, anyway, uh, that's January 1st. On January 8th, if you're in-house live here, we're going to have a gentleman you've probably seen on television before. He's very well known. His name is Dr. Phil. He's going to be here on January 8th, and you'll love his message. And if you're watching on television, you can tune into the Hour of Power the following week. That'd be January 16th, and you'll be able to hear Dr. Phil. So we're a week delay. We broadcast around the world and, and across America. And so make sure you tune in to one of our messages of hope and good news and, and receive the, the, the beautiful promises that we, have, are, that we receive from the Bible and that we communicate here on this Hour of Power message. So we want to encourage all of you, if you're watching today and you know somebody who's having a difficult time, to call them and let, just let them know that if they need someone to talk to, uh, that we have a 24-hour live counseling service. All you do is dial the number 714 and the letters New Hope, that's N-E-W-H-O-P-E, and there's a live voice there who will answer the phone and help you through this difficult time. I know that it is very difficult for many people throughout the holidays. We want to keep them in our prayers. And at the same time, we want to support them in every possible way we can. And so we want to encourage you to do that. So remember always that God loves you. So do we. And Merry Christmas.
Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. And behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them till it came and stood over the where the young child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. God's people said, wow. Thank you, Nita Whitaker. Oh, wow, what a wonderful evening. A 
especially am happy to see so many little children here. I have a story for you about two little boys, and they were being babysitted by seated by their grandpa and grandma because their parents went up north to ski for Christmas. And grandma said, "Now go to bed early, boys, right now, because tomorrow's Christmas. We got to get to church." So the boys went to bed, and the youngest began his prayers first. But he yelled them out. He said, "God." Uh, tomorrow I want a Nintendo and I want a new bike and I want a cell phone. But he yelled them out so loud, his brother said, why are you yelling? God is a deaf. And he said, no, but grandma is. <laughs> he said, well, where you are. I'm going to give you a gift in the next nine minutes that I have for you. And the gift is something I don't believe you will ever forget. For some of you it's new, but for many of us we learned it in Sunday school as little children. At Christmas time, we were reminded that the first promise made by heaven through the angels to the human family was the gift of good tidings of great joy. And that's quite phenomenal because you see, this was 2,000 years before there were professionals called psychologists who psychoanalyzed the Freudian slips that probably came out of us. Joy, the first promise made by heaven through the angels to the human family. Later would come the words peace and love. But the first word was joy. The bottom line that God promises to you this Christmas Eve is joy. Now. Here's how to remember joy. J-O-Y. Some of you learned it in Sunday school, and I did. J, Jesus first. O, others come second. Y, yourself comes last. You see, joy is really an amazing collection of priorities. Get your priorities straight and you'll live an amazingly tranquil life. Oh, there will be the down times. They don't last that long. Or if they last long, there will come spiritual strength to carry you through from sources you never knew before. But the secret of joy is really very simple. Get your priorities straight. And if you're only in the business and that's your world, this applies in your business. If you're in relationships, it applies there. It applies to children, young people, adults, the married, the newly married. Get your spiritual life straightened first. J, Jesus. Because every human being, whether you're an atheist or a spiritual person, you have a spiritual nature and you cannot eradicate or limit it. Just get it straight. And I can't believe that anyone can find a better way of putting his spiritual life in good order short of getting acquainted with Jesus Christ, whom we believe was the Son of God. Get your spiritual life in order. That means you'll, that means you'll have your ethics in good line. That means your honesty and integrity will come forth. And if you don't start there, you're going to run into trouble, that's for sure, in your business, in your marriage, or in your <coughs> spiritual life. J, Jesus first. Once you have a spiritual foundation, then you're ready for the old. The second priority, a basic living that will produce joy. And that's others second. Yes, if your spiritual life is straight, you'll have a concern for others, and you'll think of others before you think of yourself, because that's the secret of every good business. Find a need and fill it. Find a hurt and heal it. Find a problem and solve it. Be attentive to the customer. There are lots of retailing establishments today that have forgotten that principle. Customers come first. They're forgetting it. And they will pay for it. For people want to be respected as persons. Others come second. Why? 
yourself comes last. Guess what? It's okay sometimes to be what some people would call selfish. Shocking, isn't it? It's not a sin to be concerned and to take good care of yourself. It's just a sin when you are first, and others are second, and God never comes in, or if he does, it's at the last place. The basic priorities have to be straight. God first, others second, yourself last. You know, uh, I have a dear friend, Ken Least, but those of you who come to this church remember him because he's one of our pastors. Many of you remember that he was one of the men 50 years ago that attended a church meeting where they, he recommended that they call a young Robert Schuler to come from Chicago to start a new church here in California. He was one of the persons who brought me here. He's one of my dearest friends, but today he has Alzheimer's. He doesn't know his wife. He's, he's out of it. And uh, it's very sad, especially to me, because he was so important. Without him, we wouldn't be here today as a church. He never knew how important his motion would turn out to be. So we had dinner the other night with his wife. I almost want to call her a widow. And what are you doing this week, Betty? Oh, she said, I'm going Christmas shopping. I said, oh, yep. She said, and guess what? Can't get anything for Ken. And uh, my friends aren't here. The others have moved. Some have died. I'm really quite alone. So she said, you know what I've decided to do? I'm going to go Christmas shopping. For me. I got a list of all the nice things I'd like to get. And I'm going to go out and I'm going to have fun shopping. I'm going to wrap them all up. I'm going to put them all under the tree. And I'm going to wait till Christmas morning. And then I'm going to open the gifts. And I wouldn't doubt, but Betty, if she's not at this service, will be at one of the other seven church services here tonight. Congratulations, Betty. It's a good example for lots of people. There are some people that are unselfish to a fault. It's, you have to be last, but don't cut yourself out of your own generosity. Be good to yourself. You're a wonderful person. You deserve a good Christmas. And at that point, let me suggest that I up here tonight am offering to all of you the greatest gift you can give to yourself. And that's the gift of planting the seed of ultimate joy in your life. Remember, joy is not pleasure. Pleasure comes through material means. It's a joy that comes from the inner spiritual feeling of your relationship with God. So I invite you tonight, wherever you're at, if you're an atheist or an agnostic, or if you're just a secularist, or if you're a pure uh, humanist, or if you're just a materialistic, land-driven human personality, I invite you tonight to start at the beginning. Jesus first. Get your spiritual life on a solid basis. And you cannot do better than turning to Jesus Christ. There's never another person who came on planet Earth with the announcement he's come to bring joy because he's to be your Savior and your Lord. We all need salvation. Even Barbara Walters had a one-hour special well, how do you get salvation? And is there really a heaven? And how do you get there? We know the answer, not because we're smarter or brighter, but we just read the right book. And in the Gospel of St. John is the verse. God so loved this world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. Now that's in the Bible. <coughs> I believe it. I have joy because at the deepest level I know that there's a heaven. And I don't know what it is or where it is, but I know how to get there. If you know the right person and love him, <laughs> you'll get there. 
and his name is Jesus. Whatever heaven is, wherever it is, you can be sure he's there. So become a friend of Jesus. Become a follower of Jesus. It's quite simple. And then come to church every Sunday and keep your priorities straight and get closer to Jesus Christ and let the biggest part of your growing future be in your religious life. Come to Jesus. You know, I want to say, what's the most expensive gift in the world? And it's free to anybody who wants it. The most expensive gift is salvation. Christ died on a cross for you. And it's free to anybody who wants it. Come unto me, he said, you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come to me, is Christmas gift to you tonight. Follow him. Find faith, and you will find joy forevermore. Amen. Now as this beautiful service comes to a close, why don't we just all sit back, relax, and feel Christmas. Just for a minute. Just for a minute, let me use my imagination. Let me imagine that you and I can go back, what, over 2,000 years to that little town of Bethlehem. Are you with me? The word in Bethlehem is, is that someone has seen a new king. A king. So why are we standing outside of this old cattle barn? But it's cold, so we stumble inside. I look around, and I see a light coming from the back of the stable. So I pick up my lantern, and you and I walk toward the light. Suddenly, suddenly I see him. That beautiful little baby boy lying there on a bed of hay with the glory of the angels shining all around about him. And I know and you know, this is the Son of God. And it all took place away in a manger. And just for a minute, tonight, you and I were there.
Thank you, thank you, Roger Williams. Always with us on Christmas Eve. And you'll never hear music like that except in the Crystal Cathedral with Roger at the piano and Sean Groombridge at the over 17,000 pipes organ. Wow. And now I want all of you, before you join us in the closing number, Roger will shortly be playing Silent Night that will conclude our service. But while you join in the singing, will you think about making a commitment before you leave this place? There was the God who came in Jesus. Take him as your Savior, as your Lord, your best friend. God will give you eternal life. Silent night. Let's do it, friend. But you've got to sing. And you've got to sing. Okay. Let's do it. You may remain seated for the singing. bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you an inner peace until you come to stand before Jesus in that day in which there is no sunset, no dawning, only eternal light and life and music forevermore. Amen. joining us from the Crystal Cathedral for this wonderful Christmas Eve candlelight celebration. Hello, I'm Ed Arnold with a reminder to join us every Sunday on the Hour of Power. This program can be seen each week on the Lifetime Cable Network at 8 a.m. Eastern and Pacific Time or the Trinity Broadcasting Network every Saturday evening at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 Pacific. You'll also find a complete listing of local stations on our website at hourofpower.org. Good night and Merry Christmas from the Crystal Cathedral. And remember, God loves you and so do we.